And welcome back to the Move Evolution Heal, Move and Evolve podcast. And I'm super excited to have a colleague, friend, very special healer, doctor of traditional traditional Asian medicine, specializing in women's health, Dr. Danette Bean. Greetings, good afternoon, and salutations. How are you? I'm okay. How are you? Super relaxed. Did my walk this morning, my meditation. Um, and I'm really excited because I'm talking to you. I've been wanting to pick your brain for years. And before I even start, what did you do for yourself today? Because I follow you on Instagram. I see you oh. doing your Qigong. Ah. What did you do for yourself today, selfishly for yourself, for health, wellness, mental well-being? I'm going to tell you one of my favorite things to do that makes me feel so cared for is I have vegetables for breakfast. Like when I have vegetables for breakfast, I feel like I'm unstoppable. Like... <laughs> <laughs> that's all I need. I have that's your thing. <laughs> and sauteed kale and some um, fermented vegetables and some pastured eggs. I was very happy. I thought you were going to say jumping jacks or burpees or taking a long walk. You said eating your best. Nothing's wrong with that. Because Nothing then you know that. that's your energy, high energy, high energy. And if you're trying to get in a certain amount by the end of the day, it's harder. I find, you know, I try to get in like five to seven servings, really seven to nine. So when I start out with vegetable with vegetables for breakfast, I'm like, okay, I have, you know, made a dent in my service. This is the first for me. I've never heard <laughs> heard of that, but I actually uh, I find that very intriguing. Vegetables for breakfast. That starts my day. Do you do you still do you do qigong often? Every day, yes, I do. So yes, I what did that for myself too. It's all. It's part of me, so yes, it is part Why of me. Why do you do Qigong? Do you have a specific daily purpose or mm-hmm. Richard, in a month I want to achieve this or I know I have this illness or disease and I'm trying to um, treat that myself? Why Qigong? Oh my gosh, why not? <laughs> yes, it, it I love is, Qigong. It is, to me, it is everything. I mean, it is, you get to ground and you get to move, you know, you get to promote circulation and it's... Um, energizing and relaxing so I do it because it's grounding for me and um, I know that it helps my what we say like your constitution like we each have our weaknesses and so it's the one that I do help specifically for my weaknesses so yeah I just start off that's one of my first things I try to do it before I talk to anyone in my home but you know daylight savings <laughs> Or when that when daylight savings happens, it throws things off. When it's not, then it's not. So, yeah. Do you use it in your practice and other specific um, movements for? Uh, uh, and we'll talk about your specialties in a moment, like um, incontinence, prolapse, pain during urination. Um, do you have specific qigong positions, movements that you prescribe with your other herbs and treatments? Yes, yes, I do. I do. You know, everything always depends on the person, you know, and what their goals are. But yes, definitely. And then take into account the seasons. I'm really into that also because we explain. Well, we have a relationship, you know, a very close relationship between the environment and nature and ourselves. And when we live in the city, sometimes it can be harder to remember that because we can turn on the lights, we can make it warmer or colder, but the traditional Asian medicine is really all about the elements being within us. And so when the seasons change, we would say the chi moves to different locations. So when we're in the winter, the chi is more within. As we come to spring, it comes out a bit more. Summer is when it's out the most, fall it starts mm-hmm. coming back in. So I think about that with everything that I do with my patients. I think about that with what I recommend and you know, for certain qigong as well. Now that Mother Nature is now on crack, no offense to Mother Nature, we give this to you, <laughs> oh, and the no. seeds are all stretched out and warped. Is there a correlation between, like, you know, we've been in winter too long, or winter was too short? Does that throw off our, our, our natural biorhythms or our, 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 the natural cycles? If so, okay. <laughs> Go ahead, get the laugh out. That's good. It's good to hear you. Sorry. You said you said now that Mother Nature's on crack. That was funny. <laughs> um, <In> my moment. <laughs> so yes and no. You know, we there are patterns and there are cycles, you know, and so the patterns don't really change. The general patterns, 
don't change, right? We know one season will happen and then the next and then the next and then the next. <clears throat> what happens during that time, you know, based off of what we've done to the earth and all of that, you know, that's a whole other story. But I do still believe that uh, that it all affects things and that we have a relationship to it. So. Gotcha. And this is a total non sequitur, but I'm fascinated with mushrooms and trees and how they're all connected and they can span miles and they're all yes. by different pathways. And yes. I don't know why, just because <laughs> no. we're connected. I believe we're connected no. to nature yes. totally. Listen, you know? I am really into trees. Like I am really, and for those, you know, with smoking habits, I'm not talking about those trees. I'm talking about <laughs> the trees that you go to see in the parks and that are, you know, there quietly, who, you know, 